So, Sweet Alice, that's your yes. artistic singer-songwriter name, right? How did you come up with that? Sweet Alice is actually a nickname that my dad gave me. Um, even from when I was really little, he called me Alice. My, my name is Allison, and growing up, I was called Allie all the way through college. Then when I finished college, I just got sick of correcting people. So I just started telling them my name was Allison, which it is, but I just kept, I just started going by that. And then it actually wasn't until I came, um, well, I did, I started, you know, putting my music on Spotify and I just thought like, what am I going to call myself? And it just kind of popped into my head, like that my dad had always called me Sweet Alice, you know, it just a little, a sweet little Alice. And so I just did it. I just like got on distro kit or like a which is like a music streaming you like put all your music on there and it streams it everywhere so I got on that and it was like artist name and I was like oh so I just it just came in my head and I just put it and like committed to it so I did that and then it, it wasn't until I came to rehab that people started calling me Alice now I go by Alice or just introduce myself as Alice because they heard that was like my stage name and they were like you are an Alice you're very much an Alice <laughs> So now I, I think so. I agree with them. You very much look yeah. like an Alice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's your, it's your it. aura. It's very much Alice-like. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I really like the name. So that wasn't hard for you at all then to think of the name because you just thought, oh, my dad calls me sweet Alice. So I'll just go with that. Yeah, yeah. totally. It just seemed right. Yeah. I really like it. Um, yeah. And then I saw on your arm you have a tattoo. Can you tell us what that is? means yeah so anyone sure. watching on youtube she's showing there's two tattoos on her arms so if you pull up the youtube three. video you'll be able to see oh you have three so yeah so this is an arrow this was my first tattoo ever the significance of that is follow through um i read a book called zen in the art of archery highly recommend so that's kind of where i got the idea with the arrow and then i have this one is a polar bear Aww. and that one I got for my birthday one year. Um, polar bears signify are very symbolic in a lot of different cultures. Um, they can signify survival, strength, and I just love him. And this is like a purplish, like amethyst color. And then this tattoo was my fourth, my third one. It says "Go Getter," which is um, and then has these little stars around it. "Go Getter" is from that um, the Beatles song. Um, I mean, Mr. Mustard. Anyway, he talks about his sister Pam. She's a go-getter, and there's also a Black Keys song that talks about the go-getter. And then this year, I just barely got the musical staff around it, so it just has these oh. five lines that surround it, which is just representative of the musical staff in kind of like a subtle way. So the little stars are just symbolic of little notes on the staff. And yeah, more to come, I'm sure. I hope. But yeah. for now, those are, that's all I got. I decided to put them on my arms so that when I get old and fat, they're still visible <laughs> and, uh, and that you can see what they are instead Smart of Smart location. Those. And they're quite tasteful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. What yeah. does the polar bear mean to you? The polar bear to me, mean, you know, it does signify survival and it does signify just um, persevering. They're very adaptable to their climate. Yep. Very adaptable. They survive even though melting ice caps, but that's another yeah. <laughs> that's another whole whole other thing. Topic. We're doing yeah. our best. To, we're doing our best to kill them, but they just keep surviving. Oh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, they're beautiful. That's a cute tattoo. The arrow. I love Thanks. the follow through. I say that. That's one of my life mottos. Just whatever Thanks. you do, whatever it is, follow through. Like make sure you tie up yeah. any loose ends. Do what, like you said, do whatever you can to make sure that you've taken care of everything in your power. And then yes. anything beyond that is out of your control. But at least you can rest peacefully knowing that you did everything that you could to follow through on what you set out to do. So I right. love that. Well, and it, also keep, it also helps me keep in mind when I'm going to commit to something, you know, like, oh, do you think you can actually do this? Like, can you follow through mm -hmm. on it? Like, if not, like, don't agree to do stuff that you don't think, you know, it doesn't mean don't be helpful, but just there, I'm, I was, I'm very agreeable. I love, really like to overcommit to things. And so I just had to put some kind of reminder on myself to always, always, always only agree, you know, if I really, yeah. if I really feel like I can follow through. And then when I do make a commitment to, to do it, to keep my word, to say what I, to do what I say I'm going to do, you know. I think that's very important. I'm so glad you pointed it out. And thank you for reminding me personally. <laughs> 
on that too, which is something that I'm constantly working on. I've gotten a little bit better about it, but yeah, thanks for reminding everyone to not only follow through on what you agree to do, but also evaluate if that's something you truly want to do or not, and not just agree yeah. to do things or put uh, take on something that you didn't really have the time to fully look into and kind of analyze if you're able to accomplish just that, that task or not whether yes. it's work or in your relationship or friendship commitments, you want to yes. make sure to not do open promises. Cause one of my pet peeves is flaky people. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, it's brutal. And you know, and like, I, I hate being that person too. And I just never really saw myself like being flaky, but it was pointed out to me, you know, multiple times, like, can you relate? You said you'd be on time. And like, especially in, you know, in the performance world, like if you're late, like you can, someone can replace you instantly. They don't need late people, you know, they can fire your ass and get a new person who will be on time. So I just had to like permanently imprint that on myself to just follow through, be on time, say what you do, what you say you're going to do, you know, but then keep in mind, like, don't commit to shit that you can't do. So I think that's what you can't follow through. Yeah, I think the second part of what you said, don't commit sh to shit that you aren't willing to do. Like that's, mm -hmm. I think probably even a larger lesson to be learned here because so many people verbally say things, but they don't truly mean to do or commit to. So I think right. that's an even bigger lesson. And then I love the music yeah. stuff. And it can be from a place, you know, and it can be from like a genuine place. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. I was just going to talk about your third tattoo, the music staff yes. with the five lines. That's so smart. Yeah. And, and your Thanks. everything about you is music, songwriting, mm -hmm. singing. So that totally makes sense. Yeah. I just so, didn't want to get like a big, huge, like, you know, people do like the big treble clef, like mm -hmm. thing, which is cool. Like, you know, perspective, that's what you have or like big musical notes. But I just thought this is kind of a more subtle way so. yeah yeah and yeah. it's it's not too obvious what it is so then it's like a conversation mm -hmm. starter as well totally so what instruments you, you said you have a keyboard and a guitar and of course your main instrument is your voice right <laughs> yeah I don't I don't play the guitar anymore I'm sure I could you know figure it out if someone showed me the chords again but I like to have like fake nails and so I don't play the guitar anymore mm -hmm. and make that sacrifice um but I do love playing the piano and I have a keyboard here with me. Um, it's a, like a full 88 key keyboard and it's like weighted keys. And so it feels the closest to a piano that I could get. But mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. I love That's this, what I like, have too. I love it. My husband got mm -hmm. me the, the weighted keys, the full keyboard, because so many yes. of them sound different. They sound like a keyboard, yes. you know, and they don't have they that. Do. They do. They, they don't have that feeling of keys and it just feels like you're tapping on plastic. But yes. I made sure, yeah, so he got me that many years ago as a, I think it was a Christmas gift um, oh. when we were still in college. So we've brought that every time we've moved somewhere, we've hauled that with us. So I still have my nice. my keyboard with the way to keys. Oh, I love great. it. What a great gift. Yeah, yes, mine was yeah. also a gift for my ex-husband. So oh. yeah, I love it. My we have some things in received. common. <laughs> we do. Yeah, I, I would say that's probably the top best gift. That's my favorite mm -hmm. gift that I treasure as well. So Me you too, got a keyboard, I got a keyboard from yes. our lovers. So that's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> and then the guitar I took on in, I think it was also in, it was actually in high school. Um, but yeah, I have to keep my nails pretty Oh, trimmed. yeah, you keep them short so you can All the play. time. They're actually, right. yeah, I can't, I can't have it even a little bit because I have long nail beds as it is. So mm -hmm. even when my nails are trimmed to the skin, it's sometimes still like bothers wow. me. Yeah, I have really long nail beds. So like things like rock climbing, it's very hard for me to grip onto those little, whatever they're yeah. called, the little things on the wall because my nails get in the way. Um, so right. I do have to keep them trim for the guitar, but I don't play as much as I would like to. And ever, ever since now, actually starting the podcast, it's like a lot of my time is around editing <laughs> the podcast. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Of course. I'm sure this keeps you super <laughs> yes, busy. Yes. Yeah. So, but I would love to get back into playing music more often. And then I guess the right hand, you can keep the nails a little bit longer, but I just have them both the same. And then right. if I ever do let my nails grow out, then I just don't play guitar for those couple weeks. Yeah, then you just take a break on that instrument for a minute. Yeah, yeah exactly. but your fake yep. nails look lovely. So I Thank guess that's you. a sacrifice you're willing to make. 
One hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you, CBS, for stick on nails. Ah, and then they don't bother yeah. you to play the keyboard at all. No, not at no. all. Okay. Yeah. Um, do, do you have any fun stories of while you were performing on stage or anything like that? Yeah, I have a lot of good stories. I have um, I have a story of performing when I was in, in Parker, Colorado. I was at a regional theater there. It was a very family-friendly theater. We were doing a production of Spam a Lot, and I played, uh, if, you've, if you're familiar with Monty Python and the Holy Grail, I played the French taunter, who is the, the one that stands on top of the castle and is insulting King Arthur. Um, he calls him... I mean, I'm not going to do the, the full impression. Well, maybe I will a little bit. But anyway, he just, um, he, <laughs> he just tells them, you know, your, your mother was a hamster or whatever. Like he does all these like insults at him and everything. And so they do this part where King Arthur and his knights bring like a wooden rabbit, you know, to try to get in and, and go the Trojan horse method um, to get into the castle. And so he comes out and, you know, is inspecting the rabbit. And for whatever reason, they had the rest of the cast like come on stage and like play different like village people. And so they were all kind of surrounding us. And it was a very strange moment, which was different than we had ever rehearsed it or ever performed it. But this guy behind me had like this stuffed animal of a pink panther and everyone had kind of like a different prop or something. And he had this stuffed animal of a pink panther. And I don't like that for some reason I don't know why but the like stuffed animal and, like the pink panther in general kind of freaks me out so he like put it around my shoulder and I looked at it and I just yelled in my accent what the fuck is this and I just like panicked because it was just like right in my face and that had never been there before we'd never rehearsed it that way we never performed it that way and so it was completely unexpected and so I saw it and I just yelled that out and the audience like it was like an audible mix of like a gasp like because <gasps> I mean saying fuck on stage is like not Cool, especially at like this family theater and you know the other half of the audience was like black, cracking up this is in front of like 400 people like it's like a full auditorium and you know kids and families and all that stuff but then I think anybody who you know was just kind of going with the flow of the show or like wasn't really or kind of is used to that you know like didn't really care and, it, and they thought it was funny and after I did it I didn't even realize that I had done it I just kept going with the, the scene and so when I finished the scene and I went off stage, everyone was like, oh my God, like, what did you do? And then someone basically retold me the story and I just was like, oh my God, oh my, like, what do I do? Like, what do I have to do? And I basically had to like apologize to the the board and like, you know, like make like this statement that like it was, you know, unintentional and that I understand it put the theater's reputation at risk. And like, I really had to like take all this accountability, but I was like, you should blame that motherfucker who put a fucking stuffed animal in my face. Like stick to the script, bro. Like don't be changing it up on me at the last second when I have lines. So, I mean, obviously there's improv in theater, but that was not cool. That was not one of those moments. And I just, at least I stayed in character, you know? That's what I was <laughs> going to say. Like, yeah, at least you uh, stayed in character. You stayed with your accent and everything. <laughs> totally. Yeah, just took it on. Took Committed, it on all follow the way. through. Follow through For in your sure. character. No matter what comes yeah. up on the stage, improv it out. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I just was like, why Why would you do that? Why did you do that? And he was like, I don't know. I, didn't, I definitely didn't think that was going to happen. And I was like, just don't, don't put stuffed animals in my face again, please. Like... That's hilarious. Out. That yeah, that I find it strange that you find the Pink Panther creepy, but you love pink. Your hair's pink. I do, I love pink. I do. I love pink, and my hair is pink. But I, for some reason, that particular character, I don't know why. Um, but I do have pink hair. I've had pink hair ever since September 2020, which has which was for my birthday, and I just wanted to do something kind of fun. I definitely did not envision keeping the vibe going. I just kind of thought it would grow out and kind of just like fade and so I'd be over it. I have really, really dark brunette hair. You can kind of see my roots here a little bit. It's super, super dark, almost black. And, um, you know, when I look back at my Instagram pictures or whatever, I'm always like, who is that person? I'm like, wow, look at all that dark hair. But I've just been pink for so long and it's been all different shades of pink. I've had maroon and magenta and like bubblegum pink and like super almost white pink and like really cool pastel pink and all of these different like versions in between. And so whenever I dye it, you know, I don't get too committed or like worried about or not. I do commit, that's for fucking sure. But I never get too really worried about what it's going to turn out like. It's just hair. I don't really care. But I have this great hairdresser. She's awesome. She's in Camarillo here. 
And she's just like been totally open to whatever I want to do. You know, I think she likes having a client who kind of is a little bit, you know, rowdy and like, we'll let her kind of do some fun stuff. I don't really, at one point I had half purple, half pink. The top was purple and then it kind of like faded into pink on the bottom. Um, But I went back to full pink again. I can't, I can't stop now. I love it. You could even do like a Harley Quinn thing, half purple, half pink. Yes. I mean, I'm open to it. I love, you know, I'm pretty much open to anything, but as long as it's pink, I pretty much love it. Oh, I bet your ha- hairdresser has a field day with you. Like, oh, she lets oh, me yeah. do whatever I want. <laughs> yep. All different. If you're on the, if you can see it on YouTube, there's all these different colors. Oh, wow. It's like Yeah. And the ombre. back is like completely magenta still. Oh, yeah. I thought the whole thing was pale, but actually... You got some neon yeah. going on, some magenta. Yeah. So I love it. I love having all these different so colors. Pretty. It just kind of keeps it more interesting. Thanks. Well, I'm going to share your pictures and videos on my Instagram as well. So the fans can see Please. from there. But I I just love it. Yeah. Cool. Thank Excited you. To see what you I'll, do share, next. I'll send you some more recent ones too. Maybe some unicorn <laughs> colors. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm totally down. I will send you um, a couple of more recent ones too. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I know you yeah. shared with me a few of your music singing videos and I'll share those as reels mm-hmm. also. I just love cool. hearing your your reels and your TikToks on about songs you've written or covers that you do. You just sing them Thank with you. so effortlessly, I feel like. And oh. like when you sing Lady Gaga, I almost feel like it's her kind of. <laughs> Wow, that is very kind. <laughs> yeah, do you, are you Thank a huge you. fan She's of her? My idol. I, I, oh yeah, my God, I saw I that you, you do a lot of covers of her songs. Yes, I love Lady Gaga. I think she's absolutely incredible. She's always really inspired me. I mean, for many reasons, you know, and I could talk about her forever, but I'll just say, like, you know, a couple of big reasons I love her and really um, respect her is number one, she continues to like reinvent herself. She has never not working on something interesting creative um you know but that it's always very true to herself you know she went from like making making herself famous from such a young age to like you know doing her um you know born in this way album and really like reaching out to like the you know young and like the gay community and like youth and then she started this um charity born this way foundation and so she really is focused on like you know kindness and helping the community then she did art pop which is like this really fucking weird stage in her life where she did all these cool like fashion you know statements and all that and then she did like joanne which is like this country western type feel album you know this pop country album which is fucking awesome and then she did the movie the star is born she did the soundtrack for that now she's out with this edm album chromatica like it's just amazing to me she just can do anything and she's an actor and she's a singer and she dances on stage and she can rock literally any look ever, like all this fashion. She's, you know, and I just think she's incredible. I really, really, really look up to her. It'd be my dream to meet her someday. Definitely an icon in a lot of yeah. areas, like you said, fashion, movies, art. I don't yeah. think I can stand behind the meat dress, but. <laughs> then, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to stand by you guys either. It smells like ass, but yeah, she definitely but, makes a statement no matter what. Yeah, we'll give her a pass on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it sounds like you've really gotten a lot and learned a lot from how she's always reinventing herself and how she's multifaceted. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you're extremely multifaceted. I mean, you're someone that has pink hair that changes in pink shades throughout the season. <laughs> and you are open to talking about your sobriety journey. You're, you work a corporate job, very successful in your career. And you also are a hybrid of a theater actor as well as a singer. And I always have to try mm-hmm. to remember that about you because I always see your your singing videos more, more so than yeah. the acting stuff. So I always have to remind myself that, wow, she's both a talented theater actress and a singer-songwriter, and you once had dreams of um, being on Broadway, you said. Are you still yeah. working toward that dream? It's definitely still a dream. I, I definitely think I'm going to, you know, do what I can to make that a reality someday. Um, right now, most of my energy is focused on, like, writing my own music and, you know, streaming that and putting it out there. 
Um, honestly, like I'm not trying to be like some like big famous thing, but I, I do want to be able to reach people on some level and be able to, you know, speak to a, a wider audience. I really want to be able to use my talents and, you know, to touch people and to give people an experience. Um, performing live really does that right in front of your eyes. You know, you can see people reacting to you, responding to you, um, it changes, you know, their, their mood and, it, you know, can, can make people feel different emotions. And so having that as part of my, you know, kind of what I think I came to this earth in particular to do feels like I just would be, you know, not, not really, it just feels wrong if I'm not making some kind of art, you know, and even in times like when in COVID, especially like I made a ton of art, like on canvas and painting and mixed media collage, things like that. And even like, you know, tried to sell it and then end up selling a lot of art. I think everybody was like so Etsified, you know, just like Etsy, 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 everything. Everyone was trying to sell things on Etsy. So I kind of got flooded by that. But, you know, I did just kind of find a different creative outlet when I couldn't like be on stage. And um, I think your original point was that you kind of forget that I do theater and music. But yeah, I do both. And um, I do want to be performing musical theater again I think being out here in California there's a decent opportunity at that I know it's more film and tv and stuff out here but I'm not giving up you know right now I'm, I'm pretty much just focusing on staying sober and working on my my individual music and that's kind of the 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 day in the life for Sweet Alice but um you know moving forward yeah I definitely want to be getting back into more musical theater and I mean straight theater and even just performing my own music live and I do hope it'll take you to New York someday you know, I do hope that I can be able to to perform on Broadway or do like a national tour. I think that would be a dream come true. Save yourself that trip to the market. Instacart delivers fresh local groceries to your front door in as little as one hour by connecting you with personal shoppers in your area to shop and deliver hand-selected groceries from your favorite stores. Instacart even highlights deals to save you money, which is convenient if you're like myself who somehow just suck at using coupons. Get free delivery on your first order over $35 by using the link in today's show notes which in turn helps support this podcast. Yes, I, I hope that dream comes true for you too. That would be awesome. That you, I mean, it would be kind of full circle for you since you did get accepted to go to a New York program for theater, but you weren't able to go. And eventually if your life brings you there, then or a different um, area, but that would just be kind of a full circle for you if you do end up going to New York or being on Broadway. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that adds just another level of intrigue and complexity to you as a singer-songwriter to also have that musical theater background (laughs) and interest. Yeah. Uh, Where do you get your inspiration from now that you are songwriting? Um, Well, like I mentioned a little bit, like I I had a lot of songs that I had written years ago that I had kind of um, hidden away for a while. And so I'm rediscovering those and and pulling those out again. And what's interesting is like I've um, revisited some of those that now actually do have like a lot of meaning because at the time when I first started writing songs, it was kind of like, it, it really wasn't about anything or anyone. It was just kind of like words that rhymed and it sounded pretty good and the melody kind of was catchy. And so I kind of would write these like love songs or, or actually like really sad songs and sad stories. And, um, just kind of like these cutesy songs too, just all different stuff, whatever came to mind. I just kind of went with it and and put it down. Um, And even years later, like almost a decade later, like the melodies are still in my head. I still can remember the words by heart. Like I just, they just kind of were part of me. But now after having all these different life experiences in between, some of them are like now about things that have happened to me. Like I can like, like for example, like I wrote this song called Sticking With You. really early I think like 2012 and um you know it talks about um like walking by the ocean with somebody and like really like and holding hands and like just how they chase your blues away and um it just seemed kind of like a cheesy like cute love song and then I ended up making that song with a guy I was dating he plays the guitar on it and we were together and we were learning this music together and kind of had like this, the day that we recorded it, we were like on the beach and we were holding hands and I had been like really down and he was like cheering me up. And it was like so crazy, like the song like came true. So now, you know, and that song is really like, 
kind of about him and like about that day and about that process. And so it's just kind of interesting how that happened. There's another song called My Promise that um, I wrote a long time ago, like maybe 2016, 2017. And um, it kind of came out of nowhere in the middle of my dry spell with songwriting. And, you know, it says, um, you know, it's true what they say about me. I'm in love with you. And, you know, the same guy that I was dating recently, you know, we we met in rehab and we were very discouraged from dating each other here. They really, really discourage you from dating in early sobriety. And um, it just, it, it, you know, it's like, I just couldn't help it. We couldn't help it. We fell in love, you know, and, and we started dating here. And um, so that song, when I was working that on that song, I was playing it for him one time and I just realized like, this is about you, you know, it's true. Like they, they, Say that like we're in love and that we're you know that they can see it on our faces and it's true like I love you and that was like a really big moment in our you know big big deal was to to really like admit that and like be you know let myself be in love with somebody again for the first time after after that long relationship with my ex-husband so it was um really interesting to me I don't know if this you know is all that fascinating but it just is so interesting to me that I wrote these songs like so long ago and then now they're like I have like actual experiences that happened with them when really it was just kind of like, oh, these words go together. and This is kind of a cool melody. Now it's like, I actually have a story about it, you know? Yeah. I think that's really interesting to, to hear about. Don't worry that if, if you think it might not be interesting, it reminds me of like the Spotify behind the music kind of things where the artist talks about what was happening when they were writing the song or what a deeper level of understanding into the lyrics and as you were saying yeah. that, that's what it reminded me of. Like, interestingly enough, I wrote this five, six years ago, only to see that it was more of like a premon premonition of someone you would yes. meet later on in life, like someone that entered exactly. your life that yes. when you brought out your old songs that you wrote from so long ago, you would have had no idea any of this was going to happen and what was in store yeah. for your life. Exactly. That's truly, yeah, that's mind blowing. Yeah. It even went down to his eye color. It's so weird. Like I have this part that says like, um, I was a perfect mess before I saw your big brown eyes. And like, I just remember play I'm like playing the piano and like singing it for him. And then I was like, I'm singing this to him. <laughs> this is about Chills. you. It was so weird. And I just like, and I start got all emotional and I just kind of started crying. And I was like, oh my God, this song is about you, man. Oh man. So, I'm sure yeah. everyone got chills as you were playing it <laughs> singing those lyrics like wait a minute <laughs> i know it's like holy crap it's about you oh i know your your original question is where i get inspiration from and mm -hmm. so you know like i said i have those songs that i pulled out from years ago that now kind of have meaning like significance after the fact um but I did go through a breakup recently um and i i'm working on a song right now that is the first song that i've had in songwriting where i'm I'm writing in response to that experience and like the lessons that I learned from it. Um, the song is about acknowledging that I've always had a, an addiction of some kind or another, whether it was alcohol or weed or sex or love or, you know, shopping or food. Um, addictions come in all shapes and sizes and all different forms. And, um, you know, the words say, like, I was always addicted to something convinced I needed to breathe. I can't breathe. I got problems, but I know how to fix them. I'll crawl to the bottle. I'll crawl inside your arms. Oh my God, I got problems and I just can't kick it. And it's just this like unravel. It just came out of me just like this, you know, thinking about like, what am I supposed to learn from this experience? Because it was a very heavily codependent relationship. And I, you know, had to, to acknowledge and kind of admit to myself that I had been going from one codependent relationship to the next even being in like a decade long relationship, there was a lot of codependency, a lot of enmeshment. And those things kind of came to light, you know, towards the end of the relationship. And um, I just had, this is the first relationship that I got in since then. And it was clear that, that some of those habits and tendencies are definitely still there and they weren't resolved. And just because I got sober from alcohol does not mean I'm sober from the love addiction, you know, so kind of like acknowledging that. And then you know, the next verse talks about alcoholism and, and about drowning in the bottle. And then, the, you know, the, the next verse talks about um, how I had to quit you, meaning that relationship, you know, to find out what it's like to be me, because I feel like I need fixing and you were my fix, you know, in this song, he was my fix, 
So I didn't have booze or drugs. And so I had this man, you know, this relationship. Um, and there was real love and I was genuinely in love with this person, but I do acknowledge it was part of a love addiction and this very codependent pattern that I've had for, for any of my adult relationships and, um, even in, in family, you know, and with friends being very codependent. So that song is the first one that I've written about an experience that happened to me, um, ever in, in any of my songwriting. Um, other songs are kind of, um, like stories about something or someone else that really hasn't happened in my own life. Okay. So now I'm starting to feel a little bit braver about using my own life experience as a as content, you know, for a song. I feel like I might have something to bring to the table now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't they always say heartbreak makes the best songs? Oh my god, yeah. It definitely does. Yeah. So now you're like, oh, I can actually write about my personal <laughs> heartbreak instead of drawing sure. from what you would think someone would feel when they're hurt yeah. and then putting that in lyrics. Although you, it's, it sounds like you have some prediction of your future with your previous songwriting that you were pretty, um, yeah, exactly. pretty accurate in some of the, the things you wrote previously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Even, I just didn't, I just didn't include in that song that it was going to end very sadly. <laughs> so oh. that's the that I left out. No, but, um, you know, in that song that, I'm, that I am working on about that, I, you know, the chorus is just that maybe this time's different. Maybe this time's different you know, oh, which always yeah. has kind of like a double meaning, like maybe, you know, as I keep repeating this insane behavior, maybe this time it's different, maybe this time, mm -hmm. but, you know, I keep doing the same thing over and over, but, but at the end of the song, it's like, you know, it's because I just, it was always like right in front of me, this lesson I need to learn, and I just wasn't ready for it, but now I'm ready, <laughs> like, and I'm ready yeah. to learn it. That so, gave me chills, I really different. like that, that you said there's a different meanings to maybe this time it'll be different, depending on how you look mm -hmm. at it. Can't wait to hear it, and I'm sure you'll Thank be you. having tons of inspiration to draw from in your next musical creations, I have no doubt. Um, have you ventured into trying to write in any other genres than the ones you're comfortable with? Um, yes, I had a very fun experiment that was very impulsive, and I was very hi and I will just preface with that because this is not like in my normal day-to-day -day thing but I did have a friend who um he is a producer and he wrote like a he made like a beat um like a hip-hop beat and uh he sent it to me just kind of to be like look what I'm working on and I sat down and I wrote like a rap song to it in like maybe 20 minutes I just wrote this song with like multiple verses and like a hook and everything and the song is called Ain't No A. It is about how I have double Ds and how I am well endowed and I am a woman and I am just like, it's, I mean, it's like, it's, I, I should definitely stream it because it's pretty funny. Like just, I don't know. Has it been Maybe recorded? Maybe that segment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I did record it. And I just like, it's like living in a, it's like a MP3 file in my email somewhere. Um, but I'd love to like actually redo it and like get it done with like a real producer because it was just like a voice memo, but, um, I didn't know that I was so good at rapping, but I am, oh. I maybe should be a rapper. No, it's just like kind of a fun experiment, but, um, it actually is like, sweet Alice, the rapper. Good. yeah, sweet Alice coming at you. Um, but it was, yeah, it was kind of just like an impulsive, like thing for fun, but ended up being like super fun. Like I would. I would love to, to yeah. produce it someday for real. Yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with Noah Cyrus's song, um, Topanga. It's a voice memo. No. Yeah, I discovered it. And like, I'm not like a huge fan of hers or anything, but I do like some of her songs. Like I've done a cover mm -hmm. of July and I found Topanga. And it's one of those songs that you just want Like the first time you're like, okay, I'm not sure if I like this, but then you keep listening back and then you just keep wanting mm -hmm. to hear it. And mm -hmm. it's a voice memo, but that's how she released it in her album as a voice memo. Wow. And I think I watched an interview of her talking. I think she was on someone else's podcast talking about how that came about. And it was similar, like her friend sent her some something and they decided to write a song and they were just talking on the phone and she wrote the lyrics in like 20 minutes and they and she wow. recorded it in her backyard. That's why you hear crickets in the background. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. 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 Mine has like a, there's like a fire engine that goes by on part of it, which is like very appropriate. It's like, Ooh, oh. like a, yeah, in the background. So 
yeah that's perfect maybe you can just release it like that but like that's one of my favorite songs from her like I just I can't stop listening to it and the lyrics are mm-hmm. simple but so poignant that's cool yeah I like that well story. can't wait that's to cool. hear you rap <laughs> tell that friend to keep sending you beats <laughs> yes I need more for my flow or whatever they say. Oh, okay. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't say just kidding. You're a good rapper. Just own it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Singer, songwriter, slash rapper, slash DJ on the weekends. No. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone else in America, DJ, I DJ. I love when people <laughs> say that. I'm like, All right. You and everyone else. Um, so can you tell everyone where to find you and like your social media, the the art and music, social media pages, as well as the singles that are coming out and where to find your streams? Yes, absolutely. You can look up Sweet Alice on Spotify. I'm also on Apple Music. Um, It's everywhere. It's on every platform. Um, Apple Music, Pandora, Google Play, everything. So you can look up Sweet Alice and get access to all my music there. Um, and then on Instagram, you can find me. My handle is Sweet Alice, but it has four E's. S-W-E-E-E-E-T, Alice, A-L-I-C-E. And that's the same for my TikTok stuff I have coming up. I have this song called Maybe that I just talked about a little bit with this recent heartbreak. And um, I'm going to be doing some more music with, um, hopefully I'm going to be doing more music with this producer that I ha- hear that actually has become a good friend of mine. Um, I'm trying to try a couple, I'm going to be trying a couple of experimental things. I have a song called Found that was a voice memo that I'm going to be trying to um, actually put into production and that will be coming out also as a music video with um, this woman who is um, an amazing dancer and she recently performed a solo piece to that song and so I want to be you know do some kind of collaboration with her so that we can get that on video of her dancing to the song while I play which should be kind of a cool collaboration project so right now Maybe is coming out of the canon, um, hopefully producing Found with the Sky and then hopefully getting like a, a collaboration of some kind of in video form with this dancer. That's so cool. Yeah. I love I that. It. Bringing in other yeah. talents into your art. Yeah, it was so cool. I entered this song competition for like a dance company and it was like the day that I was coming into rehab. And so I had to like just send her whatever I had on my phone. I couldn't really go back in GarageBand and fix anything. So I sent her a few voice memos. And then I had one song that was streaming on Spotify already called Jane. And they did use Jane and Found in their most recent dance show. So it was so cool. I got to see like movement to my music. I'd never seen that before. No one has ever danced to my music before. So I got to see them. And it's like a modern dance company. So it's not like a, you know, it wasn't like some like jazz or hip hop or like main you know form of dance it's like very cool like explorative movement and just kind of more like organic I guess I don't yeah, know it was like almost cool. like an expression yeah. of art through the yeah. modern dance through their bodies yeah, yeah it was really cool so that was kind of humbling just to see like someone else's interpretation and it's kind of funny I was talking to this dancer about it um her name is Brooklyn and she's actually um, my cousin's wife, but um, she, I said, um, did I ever tell you what that was about? And she said, no. And I said, it's about getting high. And she said, what? I said, yeah, when I wrote that, I had just gotten sober. It was the first song that I wrote after getting sober the first time. And I just wanted to get high so bad. And so I wrote this song about being high and it's, it refers to like branches and trees and um, being, you know, up high and like being t- trying to get away from people. I don't want to be found. I don't want to be found out. Um, and I said, that's, that's marijuana, you know? And that's like when I would like live, sit in my apartment in Denver and just get high and like people watch from up on like the seventh story or whatever I was on, like the, up on the, like one of the higher floors and just watch people out the window and just like kind of memories about that. And I kind of put it into this like kind of ambiguous, lyrical piece and then um there's a piece where there's a part of the song where I say um, see my sensational prison and she thought I said prism 
like prism for light and so she it just like i she and so i i said well that's what it's about you know and i said what did what did you interpret it to mean and she said this is so interesting to me she goes i don't even listen to the lyrics i just think about how the song makes me feel like the vibe of the song she's like i didn't even look at like think of the lyrics or like try to figure out what you were saying i just kind of like made this movement based on how the song made me feel and I thought that was so interesting because to me as a songwriter, like all one of the things, the most important thing to me is that you understand the message, like the words that I'm trying to say and like the meaning I'm trying to convey here, the story I'm telling. And for her, the most important thing was like, how am I going to like portray this through movement and like communicate this musical language that through, you know, through dance, and we were talking about how, you know, different artists interpret things differently and how maybe it wouldn't have mattered if I had just like strung a bunch of random words together. As long as the song kind of had the vibe that it did, she maybe would have even made the same movement. You know, it had no influence on how she, on how she performed the song. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. You guys have different perspectives on it because you as a singer songwriter, your, your job is to put lyrics on a page and then her yeah. job is to create movement. So I can see how she went more with the musical component Whereas mm -hmm. you're like more focused on the words and like, did you catch that meaning? I hope you caught it because I worked very hard on those lyrics. <laughs> yeah, I did. And it was, yeah, like I said, it was the first song I wrote sober in, in probably five years and or six years even. And um, it was very, it was like total improv. Like I sat down and kind of had the chord progression in mind. And then I just kind of started saying the words and they were just rhyming and I kind of just kept going. And then I, you know, the, you'll hear in the song, it kind of has this disjointed, like between the verse and the chorus, it's like a, it's like two different songs just merged together because I just kind of had this mood going and like found this chord progression and was just playing and then just kind of heard this melody in my head and needed some words. And so it just kind of came out, like it was just all kind of in the moment improv. And then I remember sending it to my cousin and saying like, I just made this like, song and he's like this is the best thing you've written in years and you know we both agreed it's because I was sober and I could like have a clear songwriting process you know I was able to like think about words fast enough and chords fast enough basically to make up a song in 10 or 15 minutes it was, it was really I mean cool. when you're in the zone you get that creative flow so <laughs> yeah and that sure. song is called found yes okay everyone go listen to found <laughs> yes so that'll be released soon, along yes. with maybe. Uh, do you still do the collage Instagram? Yes, I have another Instagram feed that's um, all of my like personal artwork. I do collage, mixed media, acrylic paints, and um, yeah, you can find it at Quirktistic. Quirk Q U I R K Tistic T I S T I C, and that's on Instagram. Oh, what a quirky name. I like it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. And then the last thing I'll ask is I always ask my guests to hook the audience up. It's called the Hook You Up segment with something that they would personally recommend. I mean, of course, we're going to check out your music. Everyone's going to go do that. But is there something else that has added value to your life that you'd like to encourage everyone to look into? Yes, there are a couple of things I would recommend. Um, the first is this book called Zen in the Art of Archery, which um, inspired my arrow tattoo. Really good book. It's a quick read. And the other is a documentary. It's a lecture from this woman, Brene Brown, and it's called The Call to Courage. It talks about how as people, sometimes we are in the arena and sometimes we are a spectator and really the, the meat of life and where we really get the most out of it and can do the most you know important work in our life is when you're in the arena and that is a very inspiring and very uplifting um lecture by her so i would recommend zen and the art of archery and the call to courage by Brene brown which okay. you can find on netflix yeah. yeah actually the call to courage is on my watch list for netflix which i have so many things just i just add things to my watch list mm -hmm. and i don't ever have time to watch it but yeah Brene brown i've heard really great things about her she's a researcher mm -hmm. um i know she's published a few books that are um a good read i haven't personally gotten to read them but i hear that they're very powerful the kind of self-help area so looking yes. forward to that lecture hearing that lecture from her and i would love to read some of her books also in, in the future and then i'll look into the mm -hmm. zen of archery that sounds like it'll be a fun read <laughs> yes yeah 
All right. Well, thank you for spending time with us, sweet Alice. We send you, are you so with, welcome. <laughs> we send you with lots of love on your dreams of becoming a Broadway star and performing in theater <laughs> right now. Thank you. As much as you can, getting your face out there and working on songwriting. And congrats on the music you've released so far. And we want to hear that rap song and see some of those collaborative dance <laughs> dance music videos you're talking yes. about too. <laughs> For sure. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. Yay. All right, everyone. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can now drop me a voicemail that might be aired in a future episode. You'll find the link in my Twitter and Instagram bios at mfmppod. Subscribe to my YouTube channel by searching many faces, many places, all in one word. Lastly, make sure to tap the follow button on your favorite podcasting app to stay tuned for new episodes.